Hey Coffin Carts community, I have an exciting announcement to make today. I'm opening up the Hello Coffin Cards community, thanks for stopping by tonight. Um, we're going to get started in just a couple minutes, just have a couple more housekeeping things I'm trying to take care of here real quick and then we can get started. Let's see if we can get this camera to cooperate. That looks pretty good. Um, I want to say hey to anybody who's stopping by. Tonight we will be cracking packs. If people are interested in purchasing them, you can purchase packs on CoffinCards.com. Um, shipping is $1 for up to six cards um, in a plain white envelope. There's no tracking, so that is at your risk. Hey, Emily, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Um, just taking care of a couple last minute things here. Um, If you want all the hits sent to you, that's rares, mythics, foils, and anything worth over a dollar, that is five dollars. Um, and then the last option is all cards. You can get every single card, including ad cards that I open, that um, that'll cost you nine bucks. If you have any questions, let me know. Happy to answer them for you. Um, just doing a couple last minute marketing things. How's uh, how was your weekend, Emily? Good to see you here. It's uh, Monday again, I think. Hopefully it's the right day for the stream. But uh, since you showed up so quickly, my guess is yes. Um, hopefully you had a good weekend. I had a decent weekend. It was pretty busy. Um, got to stream some arena, so that was fun. 
said I had a special announcement that I was opening something. Um, I think I just meant to say I'm opening packs if anybody's interested in purchasing them. Um, I don't have anything super special. Um, Jumpstart prices have gone way up, so we had to increase the prices on those packs. Um, I think there's somebody who might be buying the rest of the packs. Let me message him real quick and see if he's coming. Um, but yeah, so unless somebody purchases some packs, um, we'll just be doing some standard collection sorting. I have somebody who might be interested in purchasing my last 22 packs of Jumpstart. Um, We'll see if they decide to do that or not. If they do, we'll be very busy opening those up tonight. But until that happens, I do still have cards from my collection I need to sort. So let's go ahead and see what I have and what we can get started with. Um, I have a pack of Core 21, a pack of Jumpstart. Jumpstart, I don't do the same way as I do everything else because I actually keep those together to play with as decks. Um, so it looks like I have six different packs here. Um, Hoping for a duplicate elves if they end up buying the packs. Yeah, me too. Um, hopefully the Allosaurus Shepherd one. I was definitely happy to pull elves for um, Tank Niner last week on the stream. It was unfortunate that it was not a Allosaurus Shepherd um, pack. I've seen that card's gone up to like 150 to $200. Crater Hoof's still a good card though, so uh, nothing to complain about there. Let's go ahead and start with the easy stuff. Um, get these cards out of the way. We'll sleeve up the jumpstart deck so I can add that to my jumpstart cube. And then um, we'll go from there. So, um, as you probably saw, I think it's live by now on YouTube, I opened a well red pack. Uh, we're starting out with Ormos, Archive Keeper, that's 4 and 2 blue for a 5 5 flyer. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead put 5 1 1 counters on Ormos. You can pay one, two, blue to discard three cards with different names and draw five cards. That is pretty crazy. Did I do any arena today? Um, I did do some arena, but I did not go live. I actually recorded some arena videos for beginners. Um, I started a new account. I'm not going to go through these jumpstart cards. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen them 100 times by now, but we'll go through the new collection cards that I get out of the other packs. We'll just leave these up real quick. Um, I opened a new arena account. There's a concept where if you have two arena accounts, you can draft more. Um, and basically the reason why that works, I learned it from Ryan Spain over at Going Optimal on Twitch. And uh, I'm not sure if he's Ryan Spain or Going Optimal on YouTube, but he does have YouTube channels as well. Um, and I recorded the tutorial and I created how to beat the color challenges. Um, the idea behind having two accounts is you get the most value out of your first four wins every day in that daily quest you get. Um, the first win you get 250 gold and then the next three you get 100 gold each. And then you also get, um, this is a pretty cool island. This is one of my favorite Jumpstart Islands. I don't know why it's a bunch of books, but it's just really cool. So definitely glad I got that one. Um, and then the idea is to get a quest for 750 gold. You can't always do that. A lot of times they give you 500 gold quests, but what you can do is once a day you can re-roll a quest. 
and then you can have up to three quests at a time. So the goal is to re-roll a 500 gold quest every day so you have a chance of getting a 750. And then if you have three full quest slots, you always want to finish one quest um, so that you get a new quest tomorrow. And then um, after that, you uh, just use that account to farm for gold. You get your four wins every day, you complete a quest when you need to, you play every day and re-roll your quest, um, and you build up gold so that you can draft um, when it's time. So Emily says she gets her paycheck soon. Hopefully she can pick up back then. Emily, no pressure at all. If it makes more sense for you to get them locally, not a problem. But if you want to support the stream, I'm always open to that. Just let me know whenever you're ready. Um, so we got the jump start pack out of the way. Um, as I mentioned, this had the Ormos Archive Keeper in it. Um, other than that, I don't think any of these are like valuable cards. I think Suspicious Bookcase is just a funny card. Like who comes up with, we're gonna make a bookcase magic card. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, other than that, Thriving Isle, the Thriving Lands are always cool. And then that Jumpstart Island I really like, so. Um, not the best pack value-wise, but uh, it's got that cool island, so not going to complain about that one bit. So next up, we're going to go to M21. Let me grab my sheets, and then we can start figuring out what I need to add to my collection. I know there's at least one new card out of this pack. Okay, so we have the core 2021 list out. Grab a pen. And let's get this pack sorted real quick. Mangara is the card that is definitely new. I have not had one of those yet. Um, definitely hoping for other new cards, but this is my second box of core 21, so I'm not expecting any new cards. Okay, we have those in order. Hopefully everybody had a good weekend. The weather's getting nicer here in Indiana now. Got to open the windows today, that was a surprise. So we're starting today with Concordia Pegasus. I already have that one. Same with Gale Swooper and Griffinary. Mangar the Diplomat is a new one and that's like close to 10 bucks I think so I was very happy to pull that. Find Megalodon, we have that. Waker of the Waves. I have that in foil, but I don't have it in non-foil, so I get to add that, so that's good. Already have the Alchemist Gift and the Cage Zombie. Already have the Bone Pit Brute. And the Weird. And the Unleashed Fury. Getting into green. Life goes on, even though I already have that card. We have Ranger Skyle, that's a repeat. I already have the Swift Water Cliffs as well. So we have two new cards out of that pack, and let me see if I have that token. I don't know if I have the token or not, so we'll go ahead and pretend like it's new, and I can deal with that later. Um, Emily says, is there any set you're hoping to open in the future? Um, Strixhaven, looking forward to that. I have um, a box on pre-order for me. Also have a box on pre-order for the stream. I have a box of set packs and I have a bundle's worth of um, draft packs to open for the stream. Um, haven't figured out the pricing on that yet, but my guess is it's probably gonna be 325 for the draft and $4 for the set boosters if anybody's interested in those. Also, if anybody's interested in picking up a box of Strixhaven, let me know and I can get you a better price than the pack price uh, due to the volume. It's much easier to deal with it that way. 
the final price will also depend if you want all the cards shipped to you or if you just want the um, rares and mythics and foils sent to you or anything over a dollar. Um, other than that, um, probably going to be getting another box of Zendikar Rising soon, probably draft packs. Um, I haven't opened those in a while. I only opened one set box of that, so definitely looking forward to that. Um, and then we'll see from there. So we have Mangar the Diplomat, three and a white, lifelink. Whenever an opponent attacks with creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you and Planeswalkers you control, you get to draw a card. When an opponent casts their second spell each turn, you get to draw a card. So this is card draw for white. That's pretty cool. Um, weaker of the waves, five and two blue. Creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus zero. What about you, Emily? Is there any set you're looking forward to? Um, one in a blue, discard Waker of the Waves. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. And then we have that Sir Porling token I was telling you about. Okay. Next up, we have a set that I've not opened a whole box of yet, so we're probably going to have a lot less duplicates, hopefully. Although I think we just started into the third row in this box. This is uh, Theros Beyond Death. Let's get this in order real quick, and then we can start looking through. Got a trash card. Um, Emily said she's trying to save up for a strict saving box, but it's coming so soon. Not sure that you can. Totally understand. How much is your LGS charge for a box, Emily? Got the Theros Beyond Deathless. Let's start looking. Hero of the Winds is a repeat. Rumbling Sentry, also a repeat. Ichthyomorphosis, I know I've said this enough to where I believe it's a repeat. One with the Stars, repeat. Witness of Tomorrow's. Do I have cards under here? Do I want to... Okay, good. Um, already have that one. Aspect of Lamprey. Maybe these are going to be duplicates. Myers Grasp. Ah, uh, we got a new one. That's a card I definitely want to get four of. Scophos War Leader. We have that. Wrap and Flames. Also have that. Nessian Wanderer. That is a new one, so that's good. Emily says she thinks it'll be 150, but not sure. Um, I could get you a better deal than that. But that depends if you want to support your local game store, which is totally understandable. Or I could open them on stream for you, or I could tell you where to get them. So, Temple of Enlightenment is new. We already have the mountain, and then we have a foil. We're not a call to the hunt. Definitely no, I don't have that in foil. Don't think I have it in non-foil either. What number is this? 287? No, 267. Of course, part of that depends if you get it at pre-release or... Um, it depends whether you want a set or a draft box. and whether you want all the cards shipped to you or you just want the rares and mythics. Um, it also depends on when I order it, if the pricing I see now is pricing I can still get. But, let's see. I can't get draft boxes right now. I can only get set boxes it looks like, or I can get bundles. Um, 
if you wanted everything shipped to you in a set box the shipping would be nine bucks and then Yeah, I'm not going to get my boxes until it's released, unfortunately, but um, normally my supplier ships on release day, and then I get it like early the next week, um, but sometimes it's a little slower, it just depends. If you got a whole set box, let me do the math real quick. So normally my price for just the packs without shipping would be 120 for that. Um, would you'd want all the cards because you want the commons and uncommons for your collection, right, Emily? Well, they would be four bucks a pack. If you didn't get a whole box, if you got a whole box um, and you wanted everything shipped to you, I could probably do a whole box for shipped for 115 with everything, uh, all the cards that is. I wouldn't actually send the. Um, box the set box came in just because those aren't good for shipping cards I would ship it in something else but I could do a whole box shipped for 115 for the set box um, if you would spot individual packs and got everything shipped for a set box that would be 129 so you'd be saving 14 bucks doing it that way um, going through these cards real quick we have Myers grasp that's a uh, one in a black Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets minus three, minus three. Really annoying to play against um, when you're playing a white deck. Um, Nessium Wonders, one in the green for one three with constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Um, so that would be cheaper than you could probably get your LGS. Um, I generally ship a day or two after um, the stream, just depends on if I'm going into town for anything. Um, so as long as I get these when I think I get them, it releases on Friday and then I would probably get them. I probably want to get it by the Monday stream, but I would probably get it by the fr or the Thursday stream and then I could ship it out on Friday to you. Um, or if you want to open before the Thursday stream, I can open it in a YouTube video as well. So you just let me know what you wanted there. Um, Renata called to the hunt is two and two green for a star three. Its power is equal to your devotion to green. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional one, one counter on it. So that's pretty cool. And then these uh, showcase ones look super cool in foil. Kind of hard to tell with the sleeve, but uh, looks beautiful in person at least. Next up, we have Throne of Eldraine. Get these in order real quick, and then we can go through and see what I get to add to my collection. Get our Throne of Eldraine list up. But yeah, that would include the art cards, commons, uncommons, foils. If you want the ad cards, I'll send them to you, but if you don't, I'll just throw them away. Um, Deafening Silence, that's a new one. Shining Armor. Fairy Vandal. Opt. 
stolen by the Fae, that's a new one. Smitten Swordmaster. Wicked Guardian. Bloodhaze Wolverine. Blow your house down. A Fierce Witch Stalker. Garen Brig Carver. Elite Huntmaster. I feel like I opened a foil of that recently. But maybe that was for somebody else in one of their packs. Because I do not see it here. And we have a Plains. I'm not sure if I have all the basic lands yet. I do not. Do I have this one? I do have this one. Missing Plains number 252. Then we have a mouse token. It's the first time I've seen that, I think. Yes. So we have the mouse token now. Emily's going to check her budget after the stream, make sure she can afford a few packs. No problem, Emily. Again, like I mentioned before, it's just whatever ends up working out for you. If you do end up wanting a box, though, I don't keep a bunch of extra boxes on hand, so just let me know ahead of time once you figure out if that's going to work for you or not, and I'll make sure I can order it at the same price that I have right now. And if it's different, I'll let you know what it is. But um, right now, they're still in stock to buy more, so... But I'm uh, I'm getting at least one box to open individual packs out of anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. I will have packs either on the Monday or Thursday after release, depending on when they get in. Um, our first new card is Deafening Silence for a white. It's an enchantment. Each player can't cast more than one non-creature spell each turn. Then we have our rare, Stolen by the Fae, uh, two blue and X. Return target creature with a converted mana cost of X to its owner's hand. You create X, one, one blue fairy creature tokens with fl flying, so that's interesting. Then we have Elite Huntmaster, or is it Headmaster? Headhunter, okay, got that completely wrong. Uh, four red and or black menace. Um, Three red and or black, sacrifice another creature or artifact. Deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. Very mana intensive card. And we have a mouse token, the one one. Very cute card. Almost doesn't even look like magic artwork, looks more like a, a kid's book or something. Although the mouse is holding a pin, so that kind of makes you wonder. I guess that's why it has one attack. I'm hoping you can get profit if you buy a box. Yeah, boxes are one of those things where um, it's just hard to tell. Sometimes you get a good box, sometimes you get a bad box. And then on top of that, like, spoiler season hasn't even happened yet. I think that starts on Thursday, so maybe that's something we can talk about on Thursday. Um, but it depends on um, the set and what people think of it. It also depends on um, like if you're actually going to sell the cards or if you're going to hold them long term because when a first set comes out normally the prices are higher especially in the pre-release when there's not a lot of supply for the cards but once people start cracking packs the prices normally go down so Okay, next up we have Ikoria. Starting out with a Keen Sight Mentor. That's actually a new card, so that's cool. Then we have a Main Serval. It's also a new card. Good, good. Then this was that weird pack that had two of the same exact commons, Sabi Sabertooth. I had to do a double take when I saw it because I, I don't think I've ever seen two of the same common in a pack unless 
it's like a regular and a foil so that was just really weird to me have you guys ever seen two of the exact same common in a draft pack before leave the stampede is in the wrong spot that's a green card not a red card already have the cathartic reunion the lava serpent unpredictable cyclone should be a new one and it is emily says if she buys box she's probably going to trade the card as fast as possible um If you're gonna try to get it as fast as possible, I would try to get a pre-release box from your LGS. Um, that's gonna be the fastest. I'm not sure exactly when mine's gonna come in and then it's gonna take a couple days to get to you from me. Um, and I know that every day can make a difference with new sets, so that is something to keep in mind as well. But if you just want a few packs, that's also not a problem. Hello, MTG Peddler. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you're having a good night. We're uh, sorting through some cards here. How was your weekend, Peddler? Need a new pack of sleeves. Heller says, going well here. Hope all is well at home. It is going well. Um, today was actually a day that wasn't slam crazy busy. It was nice enough to open our windows in the house. So that was nice for a change. Peddler had a very busy weekend. It's release weekend. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, I know you had started cracking your time spiral. Hopefully you got some good stuff out of there. If you haven't had a chance, I think Peddler has a couple Time Spiral videos up already, so if you guys wanted to see people cracking the packs from that set, I will not be opening any Time Spiral, especially now that the boxes are crazy expensive. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how that ends up working out. I've heard rumors that Wizards asking about, well, if you had more, how much could you sell? So that's either research for futures, remastered sets, or they're thinking about doing a second print run. Peddler says, beautiful day there too. Started in the garden today. So we have a keen sight mentor here, two and a white for a one four human cleric. When it enters the battlefield, put a vigilance counter on target non-human creature you control, and then pay one and white and put a one one counter on each creature you control with vigilance. So that's pretty cool. Not sure how playable it is, but at least it's neat. It's not something you read about every day. Main Serval, that's a 1-4 um, with Vigilance for 1 and white. Very simple card. Peddler has four openings recorded, so he'll be dropping a new video every other day for a bit. Hopefully the new ones are performing as well as the initial ones. Savvy Sabertooth, that's kind of the opposite of the last one. It's a 3-1 for 1 and white. Zagoth Mamba, that's a single black for a 1-1 one, one. whenever this creature mutates target creature an opponent controls gets minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn so that's pretty cool and then we have unpredictable cyclone 3 and 2 red for an enchantment if a cycling ability of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card instead exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the cycled card that's a lot of words so you're looking for the same type of card as the cycled card, and you can cast it without paying its mana cost. Then put the XL cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. Cycling two, that is super wordy. Peddler loved Ikoria, great limited environment. I did not get to play the limited environment of Ikoria. I actually did play a few drafts on Arena. I think they were quick drafts. Um, but uh, didn't really get that great of a feel for it before because it was only available for like a week or two. So then we have lead the stampede two and a green. 
Uh, it's a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Emily's trying to make a pretty good collection, so I'm going to have to start getting some more serious about magic. Yeah, I hear you, Emily. Um, most of my serious magic stuff has been on Arena. The collection part is just for sets for me, but um, once we can get vaccinated and start playing tournaments and stuff again. Hopefully I can spend some more time doing it. The hard part about that is I actually have to get a few hours away from home. Like with Arena, it's easy. I can just go upstairs on my computer and play for like half an hour, an hour. But with a, a tournament, you actually have to arrange childcare and do all those other fun things. Emily's favorite deck type is Red Deck Wins. Yep. Um, I think... Were you there for that stream where I played a drafted Red Deck? It was supposed to, Yeah, you were there, because you were saying it was probably going to be Boros, and then we ended up going Mono Red, so... I think we went 4-3 and three with that, if I remember right, and then uh, I played a draft off-stream, maybe even two, and it was just bad news. Um, so I am out of gems on that account. That's actually why I started the second account. So I can start building up um, gold to draft more for streaming and for just basic YouTube videos. So, wow, Commander Legends has a ton of artifacts. But I guess that makes sense with Commander. It seems to be a pretty artifact heavy format. Yeah, Emily was there for the stream on the whole time. It's hard to keep all the streams straight. I know you've been there for most of them, but I wasn't sure if you were there for that one, so I thought I'd ask. And then when I was thinking about it, I was like, yeah, yeah, you were definitely there. So. So, Anointer of Valor is new. Seraph of Dawn is new. Vow of Duty is new. I have a feeling most of these are going to be new. This is only like my fifth or sixth pack of Commander Legends. What are you doing tonight, Peddler? Are you packaging up more cards you sold or just kind of relaxing tonight? Peddler says he traveled to a tournament so he could stop me in magic in person. I think I have to stomp you in arena before I can stomp you in person. And honestly, I don't know that that would happen. I'm definitely not the best magic player. I enjoy playing, but I'm nowhere near the best. I'm like at least 500 away from the best according to arena. And that's just in standard. In uh, draft, I'm, I just barely made diamonds, so nowhere near an expert when it comes to that. Peddler says eBay and making playsets of commons and uncommons. Do you sell the playsets or do you keep one for yourself? Our Millery Sphere? I've yet to hit a duplicate. I know there is a duplicate in this pack but one is foil and one is non-foil because they both came from the same pack. The nice thing about Commander Legends is you only need one of each of these cards if you play Commander. So having more than one doesn't make any sense. Unless, of course, you have more than one Commander deck you want to play them in. So we'd not get a single duplicate that I did not have one of already, so that's great. Emily says, really hope that Arena can get into mobile devices because I tend to use mobile a lot. Um, it is live on Android already for select phones. You can check and see if yours is one of them. If you have an Android phone, just go to the App Store and it should tell you if you can download it or not. Um, I know it's probably going to be on the higher end phones though because it takes a lot of resources. 
So let's take a look at these commander cards, see if they're any good. I have not played commander yet, so it's going to be a very uneducated opinion, but we can talk about them. Starting out with Anointer of Valor for 5 and a white, so that's pretty expensive. You get a 3-5 flyer whenever creature attacks. You may pay 3. When you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature. Kind of expensive, but it might have a place. You have an Apple phone, so that's the problem. That's going to be a big problem. I don't know. I would think they're going to try to get it to all Android devices before they even try to get it to Apple. Um, I know developing for the different platforms is... Uh, not easy, so that's not fun. Um, yeah, that's tough. I don't know if maybe you have an Android tablet that would run it, maybe. Um, but you probably have an iPad if you have an iPhone. So Seraph of Dawn, 2 and 2 white for 2-4 Flying Lifelink. Flying and Lifelink's good, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem that great. I think I'd rather have a Sarah Angel. I guess Sarah Angel costs one more, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem super strong to me. Vow of Duty, this is an uncommon, so there's a chance that it might be good. Two and white for an enchant creature gets plus two plus two, has vigilance, and can't attack you or a planeswalker you control. So that's good if, like, people steal it. Um, Emily does have a computer, but it's definitely not the best to work with on Arena. Yeah, that's tough. Um, unfortunately, Arena does take a lot of resources. I have a laptop and a desktop. The laptop's relatively new within the last couple years, but the fan still kicks on high even when I play on there. I normally play it on my desktop. Um, deranged Assistant for one and a blue, you get a 1-1, one, one, tap it to mill a card, and add a colorless mana. Looks like this mills yourself, not somebody else, so you have to have a specific type of deck for that. Probably not a playable card if you ask me. Maybe in draft, but not in commander constructed. We have one in a blue for one three. When it enters battlefield, scry two. I don't think I'd be playing that either. Defiant Salvagers up next. Two and a black for a 2 2, sacrifice an artifact or creature, put a 1 1 counter on it, activate this ability only at the time you could do a sorcery. So you can't even do it during combat. That sounds not the best. Unless you have a bunch of tokens to sacrifice. Useless tokens to sacrifice. Why would you have useless tokens? Exquisite Huntmaster, 3 and a black for a 4 2. When it dies, create a 1 1 green elf warrior creature token on core for 4 and a black. So that could create a lot of Elf Warrior tokens. Then we have Boarding Party here. This is a human pirate as opposed to a wolf pirate maybe? Parrot pirate? Um, five and a red for a six three with haste and you get to Cascade. So I guess Cascade's what you're looking for there because six three for six is not super exciting. We have Rumjin Goblin up next, two in red for a 1-1. One, one. Tap to discard a card, and then you draw a card. Peddler's never played Commander either, not my thing. I think it would be fun. Um, it's just more of a paper format. You can't play it on Arena, so that's why I haven't been able to play it. And I'm not buying cards on Magic the Gathering online. That system looks like it looked back when I played it in like 2005, 2006, and uh, it wasn't awesome then, and it's not awesome now. I mean, the benefit is it has more cards uh, that you can play, but just not my thing. I'm definitely sticking to Arena if I'm going to play Magic on my computer. We have Dung Glade Regent. That's 5 and 2 green for an 8-8, eight, eight, so that's pretty big. When it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch, and as long as you're the Monarch, permanents you control have Hexproof. So that could be a lot worse. Um, it could be a lot better with Trample, but overall... It's a big green stompy card. It's not intuitive, but you can get paper cards from MTGO. Yes, you can do the set redemption thing. Um, 
but if I wanted the paper cards from NTGO, I'd probably just buy a sealed set from somebody else. It would probably be about the same price, I would think. Um, maybe even cheaper than buying the packs to get the cards. I don't know much about the MTGO economy anymore, but it wasn't the best when I was there last time. Uh, one in a green for a 0-0, zero, zero, enters battlefield with two 1-1 counters. In the beginning of your upkeep, you can remove any number of 1-1 counters and put them onto another creature. So that's interesting. I could see how that could be useful in certain situations, even as a common. Slur Call and Jesting enters battlefield with five 1-1 counters. When another this or another creature you control dies, if it had a 1-1 counter on it, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control that has a 1-1 counter on it. So that would definitely work with Scrounging Bandar. Um, it is if you are decent at draft. Not. I guess if you're decent at draft, you can get the cards, but then like, don't you have to have a complete set? Um, most of the time I play on Arena every day. It just depends on what's going on in life. Sometimes I don't have time, but normally, I work on my computer, so when I take a break, I'd speed up Arena and play a game or two, and then I get back to work. So that's kind of how I spend my mental, um, my mental break to get back in. You want tickets to let you draft on a loop without buying in. Yeah, I think I would need to get better draft first. So for two red and the green, you have Hans Eriksson, Ach Hans Run from the unglued card, I believe it was. Whenever it attacks, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield tapped and attacking defending player or planeswalker they control. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. When you put a creature card onto the battlefield this way, it fights Hans Ericsson. So, uh, you can kill Hans pretty easy if you have powerful stuff in your deck. Uh, Peddler says from Lurgoif. There's actually a called card. Ca card called Akhan's Run as well. It's either an unglued or unhinged. Um, our Millery Sphere for two. Uh, you pay two, tap and sacrifice to search your library for up to two basic land cards reveal and put them into your hand and shuffle your library. That could be good. That's some pretty good ramping right there, although it takes a couple turns. Then we have Hero's Blade. It's the artifact equipment for two. It's a sword. Uh, equip creature gets plus three plus two, so that's not awful. When a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Hero's Blade to it. Equip is four. That's where the bad part is. So, it's only good for heroes. Ingenuity. Engine's a very expensive artifact. Um, for seven, you get to Cascade, so that's good. One tap and sacrifice an artifact. Return target artifact you control to its opponent's hand. Or owner's hand, opponent's hand. So the coolest thing about this card, and I don't know what they all are, but if you look at this artwork, there are all sorts of artifacts in here. Like it looks like the bottom is part of Commander Sphere. There's Soul Ring in there. There's a bunch of other ones too. I don't know what they are just because I don't play enough Commander to know what all like the mana rocks and stuff are. But um, there's a bunch of artifacts. I don't know how many. Rings of Bright Hearth, it looks like, are there as well. Um, some sort of hammer, maybe. Emily says, do you think Modern Horizons 2 is a good idea? Um, I heard it's going to be expensive. Like, more so than the first one. I do think, um, in the beginning, the cards will be worth a lot. And then it'll just depend on how many they print as to how valuable it becomes. So, Lumen Great Gargoyle 6 for a 4-4 flyer. It's an artifact, so that's like the only benefit to it, I guess. Moss Diamond's a mana rock for two. It enters battlefield tapped. You can tap it to add a green. Looks very cool, though. Definitely would like foils on those. Um, Peddler's huge on Modern Horizons 2. Peddler opens a bunch of boxes as soon as they come out and then sells the singles. Um, so he's not like a long-term or a player as far as that goes. So that gives you some perspective on why he likes it. I do think it'll be good from that perspective if you get your cards quick and open them up. Universal Solvent costs one, but if you want to use it, you have to pay seven and tap and sacrifice it to destroy target permanent. So that's a get it down early and it'll pay off later. Speaking of Universal Solvent, here's the foil version. A little muted in the sleeve, already a little curly, like the form of a Pringle. 
Um, they're better than the other Commander Legends cards. Then we have the Elf Warrior token. I will be able to use these in my uh, Commander deck that I got from Caltime, the Elf deck. Peddler's not a good barometer of actual players. Hopefully they don't make premium Modern Horizons at this point. They are. They're doing uh, Modern Horizon draft packs. They're doing Modern Horizon set packs. Modern Horizon collector packs. They're even doing Modern Horizon pre-release kits. Um, so... Sorry to burst your bubble, but it's going to be expensive. Um, I read somewhere that it's more than Modern Horizons 1 was, so... Wizards want your money. Um, I don't remember where I saw it. I think it was on reddit.com slash MTG finance, if I remember correctly. Peddler thinks a box of collector's packs, just 12 at that, will be uh, four to $500. I, it'll definitely be north of three. Um, not sure how much north of three, but it'll be north of three. I think you'll be lucky to get a draft or set box for 150. It's probably going to be closer to 200 or 300. Um, but we'll have to see. And then the question is, does this box come with 24 packs or does it come with 36 packs? Um, we'll find out more in the future. Looks like Dr. Kaz just popped in chat on Twitch if my uh, Streamlabs chatbot is telling me the correct things. So... Thanks for stopping by, Dr. Kaz. Let's see, those are the cards I had planned for sorting. There's some other stuff I can um, take care of too. I can start putting some cards in binders. So let me grab those. Um, Chris Walker says I can keep up with buying MTGs long as I keep pulling expensive doubles. I hear you, Chris. Um, sell off your doubles or even just the cards you don't use if you're a player. Um, so that, that's a good way to look at it. Let me go grab a couple things real quick. I'll be right back and then we can uh, continue on with the stream. If anybody's interested in purchasing packs tonight, head over to coffincards.com. There's a video that explains how everything works. There's a form at the bottom. You fill that out and then you make payment by PayPal, friends and family. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know in chat. Be happy to help you out with that process. And I will be right back. Forgot I need to uh, check and see if I put these cards in my database before I um, put them into books. I don't think I have, so we might have to hold off on that. We'll get to see in just a second. Um, Emily asked what magic channels you like to watch. Let me pull up my YouTube and... Um, I'll just go down the list of everybody I'm subscribed to. I think there are probably some more that I'm not subscribed to that uh, probably should be mentioned as well, but. So we're gonna see if we can put these cards in the binder. I'll have to check something real quick and then we can do that. But let's go, uh, since you asked about YouTube, let's talk about who I'm subscribed to. 
Let me catch up with chat. Um, Peddler runs into Chris and all these streams. Emily asks about magic channels. MTG Peddler says Mountain Man. Mountain Man, Magic, and Jake and Joel. Those are two bigger channels to watch other than that. Small channels because they put more heart into it. Um, speaking of small channels, let's go down the list. I have a long one here. We have MTG Peddler, Paws Brown, Clever Magic Community, Jake and Joel are Magic. I do watch Alpha Investments. He's got some entertaining takes and... Um, He's got some pretty smart takes, too. Chris says he's out of packs to open, so watch everybody else. Chris, is it Chris female or Chris male? The spelling wants me to think maybe female, but I'm not sure. Um, Mr. DJ Longhair, Unhinged Magi, Tolarian Community College, just an IMTG. Um, got a couple of Pokemon people I watch, SM Pratt and Chris Pye, TCG. Uh, MTG Moxman, Underworld Games, Dystopian World Community, Magic Historian, Utter Randomness, Cardinal Gaming, and Danny Phantop. Those last two are more Pokemon. Um, then we have Collectors of the Coast, MTG Gaming Bob, Alpha Gaming. That's a good like Twitch learning thing. Uh, Delver of Brews, MTG Impact, Deep Pocket Monster is another Pokemon channel, as is ZNG Emporium and Frosted Caribou. Um, then for Magic, we're back into Grim Entertainment, Krakos Corner, 570 MTG, Cards with Michael, Titan Cards, Blissful Bash MTG, Bad Boy MTG, Commander's Quarters, Randolph Pokemon, Lee and Hart, those are both Pokemon people, Good Morning Magic, The Stomping Ground MTG, Jester King, Cracking Packs MTG, Poke Rev, that's Pokemon, Card Drummer J. I'm also su subscribed to this Emily Golan person who's supposedly going to start making Magic videos. Um, PVD DR is a magic player. Um, and then that's it. So that's a long list of people I'm subscribed to. Uh, so let's see. I want to say I put these into my spreadsheet. There's a quick way to find out. I need to look at these uh, lands in the back. And if those... Hmm, this makes me wonder. Yeah, I've put these in five the sacred and I do. Okay, so I can put these in my binder. So that's good. We'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll probably call the stream after that. For anybody who didn't catch that whole list, it will be available on the replay. Um, my Zendikar Rising in Kaldheim binder is filling up quickly. It's a good thing and a bad thing, I guess, depending on who you ask. Gonna have to rearrange my table real quick so I can get this binder down and you can see what I'm looking at. I guess it helps if I get us off the break screen. There we go, back to normal. Do a little rearranging here real quick. Were you guys able to hear me when I was on that play mat break screen? I'm not sure if I had a audio signal on there or not. If I didn't, I'm gonna have to go through that list all over again. Anyone done trading lately? I have not, Emily. I um, don't really have anybody to trade with here. Unfortunately, with the binder, the problem is going to be the glare from the ring light, but we're just going to have to do the best we can.
Yep, there's no getting rid of that glare, so it's just gonna be what it is. Pebbler will trade with me. I don't think I have anything you want, Pebbler. Yeah, I'm gonna have to split these up because we're gonna be really close to the um, the binder's limit here shortly. Wonder if there's a way. It's not the best lighting overall. Let's see. Sliding stuff's difficult when you're dealing with binder pages. Um, I guess we're just gonna go with that. You can kind of see it's not the best focus-wise, but um, you can get the idea. So actually, I think I'm just gonna let me see what happens if I turn the light off. It's not the best, but we're gonna go with this while we're working in binder pages. Uh, maybe if I turn this light on. That seems to work. We'll go with that. Okay, let's uh, start knocking these in. Got a Battlefield Raptor foil. Um, stomping ground spot, secret lair with lands for trade fodder for me. I'll be opening a ton of Strix Haven Japan, all art cards that he wants. That sounds like a smart plan. Got a bounding gold foil. Got a Sigrid. Number 29 looks like that goes right up here. Frostpire Arcanist is number 58. And then we have a glimpse of the cosmos. Sorry about that, guys. Looks like we had a uh, crash. The computer, the music stopped. I looked up and everything was frozen. So hopefully, uh, you guys are seeing this right now. It's taking me just a second to get back in all my chatbots and whatnot. So uh, we'll be getting in here shortly. Not sure if this is going to continue the same stream or start a new stream. One second while I get all the chatbots up and running again. Emily says, sorry, I just got back. YouTube was glitching me. No, uh, my computer crashed. It just froze. So that was not you. That was me. Sorry about that. Looks like our light is given out here. So I'm just going to have to, well, we'll leave it on until it dies. Um, I'm trying to get everything back up and running here. So apologize about the brief delay. That was a, a nasty disconnect right there. Not sure if it started a new stream or continued the old stream. Either way, I appreciate everybody who's stopping by. Um, so I try to get everything back up and running. Hopefully opening all this stuff up does not crash everything again.
Let's see, looks like we're live on Twitch again. Looks like that started a new stream and now let's check out YouTube. Looks like that's uh, started. Not sure if it's the same one or new one. If you're on YouTube, if you click that thumbs up button. If you're on Twitch and you haven't yet, would appreciate a follow. So sorry about that disruption, guys. We are back and at it again. Just got a couple more things to set up real quick and uh, then we'll get back. Gonna finish putting these cards in the binders. Hopefully everyone shows up again. Yeah, I'm gonna message uh, Peddler. See if I can get him back. We'll see if he shows up or not. Um, I don't know everybody else personally, so hopefully they come by, but no promises there. Okay, so we have that going again. Let's uh, go back into the cards here. Got Varagoth Blood Sky Sire. And a Foil Village Rites. So we also have a Dragon Kin Berserker. That can be a fun one in Limited. Although I haven't seen it played that often. I don't know if it's just not good or if people just don't end up playing it for other reasons. Fearless Liberator number 135. Peddler's back. He also thought it was his YouTube. It was not. My computer crashed. Um, the music stopped and I looked up and I was like, what's going on? And then I tried to move the mouse. My picture was frozen. The mouse wouldn't move. I couldn't control alt delete. So I had to reboot it the hard way. Got things back up pretty quick, but uh, definitely not the fastest. So I apologize for the interruption, but we'll finish up uh, this organizing, talk about anything that anybody wants to talk about. Then we'll probably call the night for the stream unless anybody's looking forward to ordering packs tonight. Um, if you do want to order packs, you can go to coffincards.com. There's a form at the bottom of the page. Let me know if you have any questions. You pay via PayPal, friends and family. No notes in the comments. Everything I need is in that form. And then uh, you go from there. Chaos was originally planning on stopping by tonight, but it looks like he got busy. I know he'd wanted to pick up the rest of those jumpstart packs, but I haven't seen or heard from him, so... I'm guessing uh, he got busy with work or life or something else, and hopefully he can stop by on the next stream, because I know he wants those jumpstart packs. They uh, have definitely been drying up. The boxes are going for over 200 bucks now, um, which is just insane. Hopefully things get under control there. Um, Peddler says the new Planeswalker from Strixhaven have him hyped. Uh, they do seem really cool, however, um, they seem kind of weak to me. I don't know if I'm just not seeing their potential, um, but I just wasn't impressed, which is kind of weird for me, but um, it is what it is, I guess. It was weird how Liliana was not named Liliana in any way. It was Professor Onyx. Um, I think that's what they called her. So it'll be interesting to see why they did that. Um, if she's like undercover and people aren't supposed to know it's her or what, I don't know. Um, Lily seems really good. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. They're both mythics, which I think planeswalkers are normally mythics, aren't they? The worst part about filling in sets is when you don't have a lot of uh, cards, like in this back um, section, it's hard to tell where they go. You have to count to find the right spot when you leave holes everywhere. And if you don't leave holes everywhere, then you have to move your collection every time you get new cards, which is equally not fun. So here are those lands that uh, Peddler doesn't have. They're pretty cool, have foil and non-foil. 
Yeah, they were uncommon in War of the Spark, but War of the Spark, I don't think anybody would call that a normal set, so... Three ninety three, three ninety five. No, that's three ninety four. So three ninety five is the next one. These uh, foil lands are very pringly. Take a look at that. You can see it. We have our foil promo reflections of Lachara alternate art from the bundle box. Angel warrior token number two. We have a spirit and elf warrior token. I think I'm gonna put that on the spirit side because I don't think I have a spirit token yet. Then we have a Coma's Coil token. Somebody said those were selling for like three bucks each at one point. Not sure if they still are or not. We also have a Shapeshifter token. And a Replicating Ring number 18. So that's it for putting stuff in boxes or in binders tonight. I think, uh, a lot of things to do unless somebody wants to purchase packs, no pressure. Um, but we'll probably be signing off shortly. Emily said she'd be back in five minutes, so happy to chat for a little bit while she comes back so she doesn't come back to another stream that disappeared on her. Um, we do have lots of stuff available for sale for anybody that's interested. I want to see if I put these in. I'm pretty sure I did, so I'm going to check my spreadsheet real quick. So we have two Axe Guard Braggarts and two Battle Shield Warriors. I wonder what caused my computer to dump earlier. That was really weird. Do you think Sealed Time Spiral will continue up? It will if they don't release more. If they do a second print run, it's going to... It depends how big the print run is, I guess. Um, if they start dripping more out like they are jumpstart, I do think it will continue to go up. Um, but also, the set prices have also been pretty good. So, or the singles, from what I've heard. So, I really don't know that you can go wrong either way on that set. But uh, I'm no expert when it comes to that stuff. Okay, let's get our lights back on to normal. Try to start discussion. Yeah. Um, I think it's weird what's going on with Jumpstart right now. You would think if they're going to print more, they would just like print a ton and get it out so people can actually buy it. But maybe the demand's not as high as they think it is. Or as people think it is. People, thinks, people think it is. Um, it's interesting to me because... Like with sets like Jumpstart, it seems like there's demand out there. It's a great product for beginners. It would be a lot of fun to play if it wasn't so expensive. Um, but at 200 bucks a box or 250 bucks a box, you're looking at like 10 bucks a pack. So you're looking at basically a pre-constructed deck price to play. Um, Peddler says singles are staying strong for Time Spiral Remastered. It dropped abnormally fast and is already rebounding. Well, that's good news for you that it's rebounding. Um, that's where I want to be. Yeah, stream definitely crashed and restarted, so... Um, But yeah, um, I think 
it'll be interesting to see what happens with Time Spiral Remastered and what the next remastered set will be because I think what had a lot of people hyped up for Time Spiral Remastered were those old border cards, which make a lot of sense when you're talking about Time Spiral because Time, Time Spiral, I think, also did that because they were in the new border and they did some old border cards, but they also did the new border cards for Future Sight. Um, Chuck Nasty says, what's up? We uh, sorted through some cards tonight, Chuck, but uh, we're out of cards to sort. If you're interested in purchasing any packs, you can go to CoffinCards.com. Um, otherwise, we're just hanging out and chatting for a little bit. I guess I could put some cards on the table to make it look pretty. Um, so let's go ahead and do that with some Commander Legends. Doesn't even slide out right. Look at that. Look, now you know it's a magic stream. There we go. Um, forgot what I was talking about. Um, you could see being original Ravnica to get a remaster. Yeah, but I think the problem is unless you get sets that had some really big, like still valuable cards or they keep doing like the old school border thing, I don't think it's going to be quite as popular. Um, you're going to run out of popular blocks because there were bomb blocks. And then when you get to like current day, blocks don't exist anymore. Um, and then they can't really do remaster set for Saga and back, so you're really stuck going Invasion forward. Um, there's some sets you're not going to reprint because you don't want the cards in Modern, so that pretty much knocks out everything before 8th edition. Um, and then after 8th edition, there's some sets you don't want to reprint because they were just like way too powerful. Like um, I think the Mirrodin block was pretty broken. Like there were a lot of bannings back then. I don't know if they'd still be banned today. I'm, I know the power level's gone up quite a bit, um, but it'll be interesting to see because I definitely think they're thinking about doing more remastered sets. But when I heard like, they're like, oh, Time Spiral is the obvious answer. It's like, that's the best one to do. It's like, well, if you start with the best, what are you going to do? moving forward like are they not going to be as good um so i think that could be a problem but we'll just have to see what's going on in the life of chuck nasty definitely appreciate you stopping by have you uh purchased that laptop yet i know you're talking about getting a new laptop to play arena and stream on um chuck so hopefully uh that's been in the cards for you If anybody's interested in doing a player draft, uh, Wizard138 over on Twitch is doing the player draft on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock central time. Um, right now there are six of us with one person potentially on a waiting list, depending on what time it's at. Um, you draft on a third party app and then you import what you drafted into Arena. Any cards that you do not have in your collection. Uh, you can either not use them for your draft deck or you can spend wild cards to use them. So uh, I think we need eight and right now we're at six. So if anybody's interested in that, that would be a lot of fun. Um, it's free, there's no like entry fee or anything. The only thing you might have to spend is some wild cards if you draft cards you don't already have. If you already have a pretty full cow time set in uh, arena, it shouldn't be a big problem um, unless a bunch of mythics come down. Mythics are where I'm running short right now, so um, I hope I get Mythics, but at the same time I hope I don't get Mythics that I don't have, because uh, I'd really hate to drop a Mythic wild card. but depending on what it is, I might not even play it. So anyway guys, everybody appears to be done chatting for tonight, so I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, Emily said she was going to be gone for five minutes, and that was way more than five minutes ago now. So hopefully uh, Emily's having a good night. Um, I will see all of y'all on Thursday. Our next stream is Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Time. Going to be cracking some packs, hopefully, or if not, still have plenty of uh, cards to sort as I'll be opening packs for my YouTube channel between now and then. If you're watching on Twitch, make sure to check us out on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash Um Subscribing over there would help us out a lot. It is, um, it's a lot of fun. I crack two packs a day in two separate videos. I'm going to start doing arena videos as well. 
other than that, um, if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to go follow me on Twitch. Head over to twitch.tv slash Cards. Otherwise, I hope you all have a good night, and I will see you on Thursday at the 